welcome back to Hot Pizza Ass. On today's episode, I have Haley White. She is a content creator extraordinaire with 10 million plus views and counting to her name. She has been seen on Funny or Die, Hello Giggles, TV Guide. She has an award-winning digital comedy series called Dated, and she's also the co-creator of Don't Call Me Mommy, a digital sketch duo. She's one of the funniest people that I know, and she's also one of the most spiritual people that I know who's going through an awakening, which we talk all about. We give you guys book recommendations and some things that might really feed your soul and lessons that we both learned along the way because I've known her and worked with her for so long. Stay tuned for more of our story on this podcast episode. I can't wait for you guys to join us on this journey. Just like everyone else in this world, I live a super busy life and rest is a super important part of my routine so that I can live each day to the fullest and get everything done. Luckily, I have a couple of tools in my nighttime routine that keep me very relaxed so that I can drift off to sleep with comfort and ease. So let me tell you about the nighttime CBD soft gels from Canna Aid. They are vegan, they're gluten-free, and they are so helpful full on the nights when I have trouble falling asleep. They kick in in about 90 minutes or less, which is the best part, and they help me just drift off so peacefully. No wonder they're a best seller. So go check them out, canaaidshop.com to try them for yourself and use my code HOTPIZZAASS for 15% off of your order or go to the show notes directly and click on that link right there where you can go ahead and check them out at canaaidshop.com. If you're feeling depressed, anxious, or overwhelmed, better help is here for you. There are times when I felt like I can barely keep up with my life, but luckily, BetterHelp makes it really easy to find and connect with a therapist at your convenience from the privacy and the comfort of your own home. Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with BetterHelp. Special offer to Hot Pizza Ass listeners, you can get 10% off of your first month at betterhelp.com slash hot pizza ass. Again, that's betterhelp.com slash hot pizza ass. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Do you ever have trouble focusing? I know I sure do. And I never like taking a bunch of coffee throughout the day because it can make it hard to go to sleep at night and sometimes you feel a little bit weird or anxious. But luckily, I finally found something that worked for me and it's called Thesis. I was so interested in trying out nootropics to see if they actually worked and to my surprise, they did. And I'm so happy that I have this tool on days when maybe my sleep is a little bit off or where I'm just not feeling that focused. I know I can take Thesis and really dial in through the rest of my day. Anyone that listens to Hot Pizza Ass can use the code Aaron and you will get for 10% off your first order. Check it out today at takethesis.com. Without further ado, here's Haley White. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am here with content queen Haley White. I mean, I have That's seen you, you me, you're at like 10 million views and counting. You have <clears throat> written content, hosted content. You're an actor. You're a comedian. You are oh a director. Gosh. I don't know. It's just like a lot of hats. I get ADD and then I'm like, next. Then I kind of get mediocre and then I move on. But I think it's like after a while you start to do a million things and they each kind of get better. But I'm all over the place. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> I know. I'm so happy to have you. I've been wanting to do this episode for a really long time. We go way back. Yes. We actually just started talking before the show and I was like, let's save it save the juice. <laughs> yeah, we met. Uh, I mean, I was like in my early 20s. That was my first job out of college other than TMZ. I was at TMZ for a short period of time. That's exciting. <laughs> so exciting. And then I ended was up like Paris Hilton days. Was that you like back more Lindsay Lohan okay. era? Yeah, That's right. I might be like a scotch ahead. I came out a few years before you. LA. Yeah, back to you came to LA and then I read something. I was reading all your past interviews, which is so funny because, you know, I've known you and we're friends, but I was reading a lot of stuff oh, that's God. been written about you because I was like just trying to think of interview questions and things I want to talk about. And I read a story where you said that your parents were like that you couldn't afford LA. And so they oh, made yeah. you do a financial boot camp. 
Oh yeah, it was called financial rehab. Rehab. By the way, it was run at the church. Wait, this is a real thing? I this thought that was like a metaphor. No, no, my car got so it was really a, you know, a series of unfortunate events. My car got towed for probably the eighth time and I was like 20 nothing and they wouldn't bail me out and they're like come home. And so I moved home and got a real job, whatever that meant. I was like just pitching like like commercials, like liposuction commercials. Like it was so wacky. And I lived in the basement <laughs> with your parents in Colorado. Yeah. And then I like saved up money and came back at like 23. Yeah. So, I mean, first of all, that's impressive. I feel like you probably learned a lot and also good on your parents for being like, listen, come home, learn this responsibility stuff. Because I mean that it's so hard to figure out how to make it in LA, especially when you're super young. Like oh I remember God. I was juggling all these shitty jobs, like bartending. We I did everything. We knew each other in this phase of life. I we know. Did every job. Every job. And then, I mean, and then the stuff that we were doing, we weren't getting paid for no. as hosting. Erin like, and I were hosting a show together <laughs> about like entertainment news. They kind of like let us do whatever we want, probably because we weren't getting paid. <laughs> yeah, I got paid ten dollars an hour at that job when I was hired to produce, but as talent, right. I got nothing. Insane. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have benefits. I didn't have anything. I just got paid ten dollars an hour. It's really <laughs> insane to look back on that and we were just like, Yep, we'll do it. I know. We but made- you gotta kinda have that little that you gotta have that crazy fire. Yeah. How many people that like we've known from that era are still out here doing it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I feel like everyone I know from that era that was doing what we were doing shifted into like content, like digital content right. creation or influencer work. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So here we are crushing it. We're crushing it. We still <laughs> cockroaches of entertainment. We made it. We're going. I had the craziest jobs though. I was a wine angel. I would like zip up this wine wall with a remote control. What? A I wine was, angel? Yep. I was a manager and I would just order food for the bar. I was like terrible. All my friends worked there. I'm like, what do I want to eat tonight? I mean, I worked every job in the restaurant industry, high stakes, like poker games with the guys would like tip you in chips and stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. I was so young and just kind of like wild carding. I mean, nothing happened bad. Thank God. Yeah. I did brand influencer work. Oh, yeah. I would do booth babe stuff like at comic cons. My Lord. <laughs> It's yeah. So it's going to get the podcast is going to get better from here. (laughs) (laughs) That was a dark, dark time. (laughs) No, fuck that. Because you know what? That's why I'm a writer. I always say like no one wants to hear about how easy your life is (laughs) and how and how great it's going. Boring. (laughs) I'm like, you know what? I got content, honey. I got (laughs) stories and I got content. She's got grit. She's been through it. Yes. But also as part of it, it's like, you gotta have, you gotta kind of find your own lane too, right? Like even this whole podcast, you have to start something yourself. It's really, it's all about that. Yeah. And that's something you've been fantastic at, like through every pivot and change that you've made. I really like that you've been able to retain autonomy of the things that you've done, whether it's like working in a comedy partnership or creating your own, like essential, like your don't call me mommy is essentially like, you're like a content hub. You get paid to create ideas for other companies, which is amazing. Yeah. I mean, I was in advertising also while I was making content for free and I was like, God, I would write the commercials and I would see how these ideas would get watered down as a copywriter. And I was like, I'm producing content on the side. I can Mm -hmm. write. So I just started writing like little branded things. Um, and now we're finally getting commercial stuff, but anyways, it's been a journey. I'm excited. There's so many things I want to do now. And I'm like, you know, on this whole spiritual awakening, whatever that means. So yeah, I mean, let's talk about spiritual awakenings. <laughs> you got to go through some shit to get to a spiritual awakening too. I feel like COVID was such an intense time for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, it just like forced us to go in and really like look at our souls. <laughs> right. What was like the moment for you where you were like, okay, I feel like I'm looking at my soul. <laughs> It was like different levels of that because for a while I was, so I was directing a lot of branded content, commercials. I was pitching TV shows. And then when the pandemic pandemic happened, I was like inside with like my iPhone, like shooting stuff. And I was just like, my husband's like making real business calls. I'm like, what happened? Who am I? But on like a deeper level, I just think that we can bury ourselves in busyness and being booked and you're constantly just so busy that you don't even take time 
to like really look at things, you know? So with my content and with my, my work in the world, I just, there's so much I want to say, there's so much I want to learn. And there's, there's so many people I want to support essentially. So I just kind of like dug myself deeper into like really studying, um, psychology and, and consciousness and <laughs> so you went through like a spiritual boot camp. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you're coming out like a warrior princess. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> well, I was like, I don't know if it's spiritual, but it's like, it's like, I just want to understand like why we're here. Mm-hmm. Like I wanted to really have a greater understanding. I grew up like Christian where it's a lot of, it's a lot of fear. It's a lot of no's. It's a lot of obscure Bible verses that do not work currently. And I'm like, this just doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know, like in today's world, how do I even make this relate to my life? Yeah. It's just so much bigger than that. So, um, I just started like reading a lot of books and understanding like kind of what's we're learning through science and it ends up crossing through spirituality because we're kind of catching up. So, yeah. So are you talking about like consciousness? Like what, what are exactly? (laughs) You're like, we came on for one thing and we are going there. (laughs) Um, (laughs) <laughs> well, it's the idea. I mean, understanding that, like, I think for anyone who's listening, I just want to make this like this something you can like really take something from is like, we are not our thoughts, right? Like our brain is working here, saying all this crazy shit, telling us what we aren't and what we should be. But like true consciousness is like kind of the idea of like, that's what meditation is like coming out of your brain and observing your thoughts mm-hmm. and being like, I am not my thoughts. Mm-hmm. Because my thoughts drove me to like a deep depression. And then I was like, I had to really learn how to separate that yeah. and like control my crazy brain, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of my <laughs> hot pizza ass journey too. It's like growing up or having, identifying so heavily with my body and having people tell me like what size I should be and what I should look like and having this idea of what I should be. And then realizing like, oh, it's not, I can be whatever I want. And I don't have to like internalize these things. And these thoughts that I'm having, they're not even my thoughts. They're like everyone else's thoughts. That's it. (laughs) Same for me. I like somehow because I was tall I'm tall my body's like a rectangle it's you know not made for modeling but I was really lanky and tall and they're like if you can lose 25 pounds you could be working internationally I was like what are you talking about 25 pounds yeah Ooh. but it's one of the same same and I always felt like it wasn't quite right my body just wasn't quite right Mm -hmm. but you start to realize and that's what this is is like you can say spiritual but really it's just an awakening of being like Fuck all this programming that ever told us that we weren't enough. Mm -hmm. That's, that's it. And like, that's what this podcast is all about, right? Like, yeah. Rewriting that programming and that shit's in there deep. Like those neural pathways are like in there. So it's, it's work, but it's worth it. Absolutely. So what do you find is the most effective for you to kind of break out of the matrix? Yes. Ooh, yes. (laughs) I'm like, career, blah, blah, blah. Let's talk about our brains <laughs> and the matrix. Well, it's really interesting because, you know, what I've been learning a lot about is the idea that our brain, the more that it thinks a thought, that kind of creates a behavior and that creates a feeling. And we kind of just stay in that like loop, right? And for us to change really our thoughts and and it really requires us to forcefully do new things every day. And so for me, it's like learning something new, like truly. And people will say meditation and I think meditation's helped me a lot. It's very hard. Mm -hmm. But once I understood that it means just like not like looking at your thoughts and letting them go, like I can see it, that does work. And that's, but for me, I mean, I've been doing everything, like all the healings, all the... (laughs) But I think it really is just like being present and understanding like how cool it is that we're here. Like we're literally made of stardust. I swear I'm not stoned. This is actually how I talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
that. No, 100%. And like, there's certain things that like, I realize that I'll have these moments of clarity where I'm like, whoa, this seems so obvious, but it's not like, for example, like getting stuck, like stuck in a thought loop that you're kind of talking about earlier. Right. So let's say there's something that happened two months ago that really, really bothered me or really hurt my feelings. And maybe it's kind of unresolved or, you know, it's, it's just like in the back of your mind. And I realized how much it's bugging me and how much I would think about it. But then I had to get to this point where I was like, you know what? I'm, none of those things are affecting me today. The only thing that's affecting me today is me thinking about it. Right. Like and you're I, giving it, the more you think about that, you're giving it power. Mm -hmm. So it's even just becoming like on like, like the most basic level, like conscious of your thoughts. I think when we're like numbing out and we're like, you know, busy with work and there's just never a break, you know, I think that's what COVID was for a lot of us. It's like you kind of become hopefully more conscious of like what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, when you spiral at all or get obsessive with stuff, how do you break your thought? Um, you know, that's interesting because that was kind of my like Achilles heel. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I feel so much and it's a blessing and I think it allows me to be so creative, but it can be it, my greatest downfall. So honestly, for me, it's being with my son. And the other thing would be smoking and weed and going in nature. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is a funny story. My therapist was like, you just need to go scream in nature. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I went on a hike and I just finally found a little spot in Fryman Canyon that wasn't around much. And I just like let it out. I just needed to scream. What type, what type of scream? Was it like, ah, or was no, it like, oh, no, like no, a guttural? No, it, was, it was raw. <laughs> like that, it was raw and guttural. And someone came running. And they were like, are you okay? Are you dying? <laughs> Did you get attacked? <laughs> I'm like, I'm so sorry. It's been a long week. I was so embarrassed. But um, I thought that was just like, wow, of course. That, but the thing, great content. Yeah. See? Yeah. I just think it's important for us to to kind of like all become aware of our, we all have a really, sounds so cheesy, like you said, but it's like, we really need to own our own shit and it's not about healing as much as it's like clearing out the muck that ever that that told you that you weren't enough. That's really what it is. Like just clearing it away. You look at a baby and they just stare right at you and don't break their gaze. It's just this pure consciousness. Of course, now that's very creepy. Don't do that. But it's like, and someone will get very creeped out. Like, what the fuck are you looking at? Yeah, don't do it unless it's your baby. Unless it's your baby. Then it's all good. That's all you do. Um, but yeah, it's it just it's just. I think it's an interesting time because as, as a collective, I do think people are looking for something more. Yeah. You know, we check the boxes, you know, and you can see like, you know, money isn't everything. It does buy happiness sometimes, <laughs> but it's like, you start <laughs> to check all the boxes and you're like, okay, now what? And I think that we're, we're all starting to go inward and realize like, that's, that's where the good shit is. Yeah. Why am I so focused out here? Like there's so many levels, you know? Absolutely. Um, what are the books that kind of changed your perspective? Mm. Well, I guess in this category, um, well, there's a lot happening and maybe it's another podcast, but there's a book called Mating in Captivity by Esther Perel. Mm -hmm. I was going through a whole experience with my husband. I think with any relationship, you have chapters and ebbs and flows. And um, that book like, changed my life because she's in, on the psychology front, like... And then I think like with the neuroscience stuff, I read a lot of Joe Dispenza. I watch a lot of podcasts. Um, I think, you know, just checking your sources and making sure you're like they're not as biased. I just like, I like to learn the science of it and then kind of take my own, you know, yeah. take on that. What Joe Dispenza book was like your favorite? I, I love him too. I don't even know the titles of his books. I just have like, I just save little pieces. So I don't have one, but I was just listening to like all of his podcasts that like he was on, um, he did this conference that was so incredible because he basically breaks down like how to manifest mm -hmm. in such a clear way with science. And that's all I can think about right now. Cause I was listening to it the past four days and I was like, this is incredible. Wait, so tell me how, Oh my how God. Do you okay. Do this? So this is the trick. Okay. I'm going to get kind of geeky. 
because, and this is, this is all Joe Dispenza, but I, I think that anybody listening and I hope like anyone that wants to like improve their life, I want to have like real takeaways because I feel like that's what it's all about. Yeah. No one cares about what I've done yet, but maybe later. <laughs> they do. Um, I'm yeah, just no, kidding. like Joe Dispenza is, um, becoming supernatural is a great one. Right. Um, I think you are the placebo, uh, breaking the habit of being yourself. Those are three really good places to start for anyone that doesn't know yes. or is interested in his work. But I want to hear Thank about you for this actually conference. knowing the titles of the books. I'm oh, like, I love him. I had a moment where I was in New York and a friend of mine who I actually know through hosting too, um, she met up with me and was like, I kind of told her some stuff I was going through and I was so upset. And she was like, you need to read. Uh, becoming supernatural. It's going to change your life. You're going to love Joe Dispenza. And it really did. And that was a couple of years ago. And I was like, wow. you know what? That's some of the best, that's the best book recommendation I think I've ever received in my life. It was so good. I feel like I, so I've just been reading online, like, ch- like chunks of things. Yeah. And I, so that's incredible. I need to read mm-hmm. the whole thing. I feel like there's so many books right now that are kind of the cross section of like science and spirituality yes. that are really interesting. Um, but I mean, my God. Okay, so where were we? Take me Getting back. nerdy about Joe Dispenza okay. and the conference. That's right. Yes. And the science yes, behind yes. manifesting. <laughs> my brain it has too many tabs at all times, so you have to keep me on track. I will keep you on track. Um, but it's, this is so interesting. So I was just like taking some notes, but this is just like what, if you want to manifest and hopefully we all do, like this is kind of the idea behind it. So we think like 60 to 70 thoughts a day, which That's is crazy. That's it? That's it? I mean, we probably think more knowing us. We think like 600 thoughts a day. <laughs> I mean, no, that was 60 to 70,000. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like 60 thoughts a day. You're like, bitch, I got 60, 60 <laughs> show ideas. <laughs> no, yeah, 1,000. But I was saying we probably think more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like <laughs> 90% of them are the same thoughts as the day we had before. And that leads to like the same choices and the same experiences, mm-hmm. which like leads to the same emotions and the same life and the same life and the same personality. So it's this idea of becoming like conscious of those things. And it's this idea in neuroscience that like nerve cells that fire together, wire together. So the more that you think one thought, the, like the deeper that groove goes. So Ultimately, like if you want to have a different version of whatever, it's this idea that you have to be like energetically in that field. We talk about like alignment or whatever, but if you can find a way and here's the work, Mm -hmm. here's the part that I'm working on, find a way to energetically feel the way you want to feel when you have all those things. Ooh, okay. So it's kind of like, I hate when people say fake it till you make it because that's not what this is at all. Yeah, but you know what? But it's a feeling, right? And there's a reason why that also works in its own way to get Mm. you to a certain point, right? Yeah. But the thing that I hate about it is I think it's the word fake that I don't like. Yeah. Because I'm like, I to me, it just seems like really peacocky and like showy and like. And based in your ego. Or buying stuff that you can't afford. Like, yeah. W- to walk around and. Dick. Right. To look like a certain thing or to project an image. But I feel like it's it's real. Your thoughts are real. Real it till you make it. Ooh. <laughs> More merch ideas. <laughs> We had a really great line about like caterpillars and goo before we even started this podcast. <laughs> a metamorphosis. A metamorphosis. Caterpillars turn to goo before they turn into butterflies. Exactly. Which I didn't know until today. <laughs> and I was just saying to Aaron, like maybe as humans, we're just like in that goo phase. Like we mm-hmm. kind of were like crawling along and we're like figuring it out. Yeah. It's all goo. It's all good. We're still going to try to do this line. We are going to. Maybe I'll just call the podcast episode, It's All Goo, with, <laughs> with Haley White. Oh. I don't want to confuse people, though. <laughs> but, like, I, we have a couple wings now, like, the butterfly is starting. I mean, yeah. who gets a butterfly tattoo? I don't even want to say my age. I'm going to own it at 38. You got a butterfly tattoo? Yep. <laughs> And you're like, this is my chapter, my You know growth. what? I, I kept seeing these white butterflies everywhere, everywhere, to the point they were like cir- encircling me in my yard. And so I looked it up and it was really beautiful. It was like, your angels are here, you're supported in your mission. And it was like this kind of affirming thing for me, which it's, butterflies seem very cheesy as a tattoo. I get it. I know you were judging me. <laughs> don't judge her. But, you know, <laughs> no, don't judge me for sure. I'm like, here for it. I'm like... <laughs> 
<laughs> That's great though. Um, yeah, I mean, I just got my first fake tattoos. So wait, is that the triangle one? Yes. So you guys, I got some, I shouldn't even say the company name because they should just sponsor me. But basically there's a company that does tattoos that fade in a year. So I got... I like the low commitment. It's like, I like it until I don't. I know. I'll show everyone. Um, but yeah, no, basically I was able to do this. So I got my little alchemy tattoo. I love that. So what do they fade. mean? They're uh, the alchemy symbols, so uh, fire and earth. All right. Because my whole family is fire or earth. But also because, like, depending on the way that you tilt it, it's also the same for all the elements, for air and also for water. You you are you are everything. I'm like an elemental X Men, basically. I'm <laughs> saying I'm like calling the power of all the elements so I can get some shit done. Hell yeah! Yeah, you're the fire though, right? In your family, are you the fire? <sighs> I'm the fire. You're the fire too. I know. I drove my parents crazy. I think as a kid. So is your son now tormenting you in the same way you tormented your parents? Uh, different ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I know, but it's interesting. It's interesting to raise a kid and being, this is also it, being hyper aware of how you show up as a person. Yeah. Because they're modeling that. Like I did this thing with him where I didn't even say what a bad word was because I just thought, cause I kind of openly cuss obviously. And I was like, I just didn't want him to associate what's a bad word. So he never even knew until he went to kindergarten and started like learning. He's like, mom, you say that. And I was like, oh, Mom, you say bad words. I never acknowledged it, but it's like when you're molding a person, you just realize they're always listening. Anyways, so yeah, yeah it's like it's like it helps you kind of be more aware of who you are. You're like, okay, I better shift that thing I don't like so much that you're doing now. So, so at what point in your parenthood journey are you the most cognizant of that? Is it does it start right away when they're little, little, or is it kind of when they start talking and you start seeing it? It's when they start talking and going, like he rolls his <laughs> eyes and I'm like, what's this like throat thing? And I'm like, oh my, and weird things. He'll just say weird phrases. He called me broski yesterday. He called you broski? Yeah. And I was like, what like, up, dude? <laughs> he's like, broski, what time is it? And I was like, don't call me broski. Do I? And then I was like, Dave's like, you probably call him broski. And I'm like, do I call him broski? So it's things like that. You just, it, but it's like deeper you know and you're like oh god you're still listening huh okay i know they say like relationships are a huge mirror for yourself right because you see your own stuff and you can blame it on the person or you can take responsibility and do some inner work it must be like that times a hundred when you have a kid <sighs> because it's the same thing it's like uh well yeah <laughs> and they're like more of an asshole like screaming back in your face in front of other parents and you're like oof all right i'm gonna stop yelling <laughs> <laughs> like that was something I had to do because I, I, I think I grew up in my family. We would yell. They would, I would yell with my dad and that definitely wasn't healthy. And I've unpacked a lot of that. And my dad's great. Sorry, dad. I love you. But we've worked through it. And honestly, though, I, my default is to kind of like when I need to get his attention, it was to yell. Mm -hmm. And I had to kind of circumvent that and be like, whoa, I don't want to be a parent that yells. Yeah. You know, in a weird way, and this is not the same at all, but I've noticed that. <laughs> Your I, dog? Yeah, with my dog. And my dad is the one that called me out on that because sometimes my dog will bark. And so I'll be like, hey, stop. And I'll yell back at her. And then my dad was like, I don't think that's an effective way of helping her. She's just going to think that you're barking back at her. Like you need to ignore her or you need to talk to her. And I was like, she's not going to get what I mean if I talk to her. Like, excuse me, could you please not bark? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's the first time like my dad said something and I realized, oh yeah, I'm basically just yelling back at my dog. Like, how do I help? How do I break the cycle? Like at this point, she's 10 years old. Like your dad's what? like telling you how to parent. Yeah. And I realized it's Whoa. not too late. <laughs> they have had to make those choices, right? Like with me and my brother. For years and years and years. This yeah. Like things that they're probably consciously always thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. It's humbling. I think it's helped me though a lot because, you know, I was for, for so long, I was just like career, career, career. You almost have to be in LA. You have to be kind of yeah. crazy. And then I think it kind of like almost helped my brain diversify to like care more about that whole journey. And 
like release the white knuckling on the steering wheel, which I think helped maybe the career. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah. Because I feel like that's a reason why a lot of people don't or are afraid to lose a little bit of control, right? But then you do kind of gain control in yep. certain ways by being like, you know what? I'm not available for everything. No, honestly, ugh, your questions are so good. This is why she's so good. <laughs> um, no, you're really good. It's, it's so interesting though, because I have now talked to, I, I love female entrepreneurs. I end up doing a lot of like hosting and moderating with them. And I just, I'm so, you know, we're all passionate about dope chicks who do dope shit. So, um, one common denominator I found was a lot of them launched their businesses after having a kid. Mm -hmm. So whatever that factor was like, uh, your time just becomes more precious or you have to really think about what you want to be doing. Like for me, advertising was like, it was actually quite lucrative. It was very easy at, at that time. I'm sure there's lots of advertising jobs that are harder. Um, but you, it was just nice to kind of really think about who, like, what do I want to talk about now? And for me, it was like, oh, this is, this is crazy. And no one's talking about parenting yet in this way. And so I just started making content about that. And now I'm in this whole other chapter, but that's kind of what happened. I know. So that was another thing I wanted to ask yeah. you about too. I feel like, like I saw you go like talking about your dating experiences. And I yeah. know that when you did dated the web series, you were pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. Look so it's you. It's like I saw I you was go pregnant. through yeah, all of these. You were six months pregnant when you I was that. and I was playing this, like we did a series um that did some festivals and stuff, but I was like playing a single girl and mm -hmm. so <laughs> and the production kept getting extended. I was like hiding behind a pillow and schlepping furniture all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I have to stand behind something. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So you have really evolved in your content and your comedy has kind of really grown with you chapter through chapter. And now <laughs> you're in this new phase, as you mentioned before, that's kind of like your spiritual awakening. Do you see yeah. yourself doing content in that vein? Like how is this going to inform what you do next? <sighs> oh, totally. So I have a podcast, <sighs> hopefully launching soon, but it's all about our embarrassing stories as parents. But then it starts to go into more exciting stories like I mean, that stuff's pretty raw too, but in a different way, but like yeah. sex and like, we start to kind of go into more. And so that is kind of where I was like, I want to talk about things that are really like that spectrum, like out there and like the mm -hmm. real shit. And then the other side of it is like, I mean, at the, I just want to be able to bring content that matters and so that says something and then just be able to like, kind of talk about what I'm learning and in a, you know, an accessible way. These ideas are so like abstract sometimes mm -hmm. and we hear about spirituality or like this, it's like you have to be this certain way or, and it's, it's almost like you're just getting to know yourself better, whatever you want to call that. It's not this thing that's out there. And so I kind of want to like find a way to, um, talk about that. So I don't know, there's a book I'm kind of working on and oh okay all kinds of like iterations of it i have a sh two short films i'm developing that i want to um direct and yeah so. and they're kind of in that vein yes yes for sure that's awesome yeah. what are your favorite daily practices that help you stay centered and connect back into like the mm -hmm. consciousness level that you want to be operating at and not yeah. just your day to day well, after I smoke weed and go into the woods and scream, <laughs> I'll come back down. Are you guys down. taking notes? Smoke weed, woods, scream. Got it? Okay. I'll come back down to kind of like a normal level. <laughs> well, something I realized is I like, I'll spiral quick and I had to like be like, yo, you got to like check yourself, girl. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for me truly though, being in nature with music. Like that's been a huge thing. Um, I swim a lot, like being in water, being by water, being barefoot in the grass. Um, also like just moving your body. Like for me, dancing on the beach, dancing in my yard, going dancing. That's like a huge, like healing with talk therapy isn't enough. Like we need to be doing more like somatic things that involve our body because sometimes that energy just has to get out or boxing. I got really into boxing during COVID. <laughs> Do you box still? I mean, I had my appendix out, so I had to take a little break. And that's been my excuse for three months. So it's fine. But <laughs> yes, I, I do box. Okay. Mostly. I want to box with you. Oh, please. Yes. They turn down the lights and suddenly you're just like 
you're just hitting the bag to like Beyonce and Tupac. And it's like, it is, you're grunting. I'm telling everybody, if you haven't boxed, it's the best. It's so it's so therapeutic. So that's exactly what I want to be doing. And I remember a couple months ago when we were at your house because Haley is amazing and she'll, you do a great job of cultivating community. So there was a community of, of people and we were all kind of talking about, you know, what we were working on or challenges that we were experiencing. And I said, I want to feel more comfortable with expressing anger. Mm. And so many people responded to that and came up to me afterwards and they were like, let's go break some shit. Oh yeah. Rage rooms. Yeah. Rage. <laughs> Did you go? <laughs> no. Okay. I, but well, I would totally box. Let's, let's. I'm afraid of like a shard of glass, like hitting me in the face. I know. And I'm like, is that my vibe? <laughs> But like, I think boxing to like some sick hip hop. Yeah. And like, I would do that. There's definitely some like grunting in the dark. And I like that it's dark. <laughs> and also the instructor calls us athletes, which I feel like is aspirational. <laughs> but I'm like, he's just calling me an athlete. If that like holds me to a higher level. I'm like, yes, I will do five more sit-ups. Um, but I'll, honestly, I think I came to all these different things because I was searching and it felt like what was serving me before wasn't serving me anymore. Mm-hmm. When I, when crazy stuff started to happen, it was like I needed to go deeper and find different ways to kind of connect to myself again. Yeah. You know, like we kind of, and the work is really like getting out of our heads and into our heart. Get out of my head. Just realize that's the song. And into my heart. Ooh, my voice is kind of like husky right now. That was good. Because it's a little... I liked a little it. Raw. I was um, too afraid to sing with you, but it was. You, t- it's just getting worse from here. It. <laughs> well, it sounds so cheesy, but it's true. Like it's like when we mostly we live in our head, and like we really have to just. I don't know. Everyone's. It's been a really hard time for everybody. So I think the more that we can talk about this stuff, you know, and like just be honest. Like every, you're gonna have. You're gonna go through shit, and it's all about. It's not if. It's when. And it's all about how you respond to it. Yes. Ooh, that was good. Yeah. I like that little sound bite right there. Mm. Yeah. It's mm. not if, it's when, it's how you respond to it. That's really, really profound and true. Yeah. I feel like COVID and the pandemic has presented so many opportunities for growth and change and stillness. That's another good book. <sighs> stillness is the key by Ryan Holiday. Oh, yes. I need <sighs> it. It's really good. I need it. Yeah. So I'm reading that actually right now. And I love that because he, he brings so many um, historic examples of people who went inward and, you know, I'm, we're talking about like Winston Churchill. We're talking hmm. about like people that have had really crazy lives or had to make really high pressure decisions that affect not only themselves, but like the world. <laughs> no pressure. And, yeah. Right. What that feels like and what these people would do to kind of like cultivate their own inner peace. Hmm. And a lot of people had practices like that, you know? Yeah. yeah. I've been reading a book about ancient, um, like ancient wisdom and ancient cultures. Mm-hmm. And it was, it's so interesting. We've, we've kind of like lost that type of like mentality now. It's like what I kept realizing was like, if I can shut myself up enough, sometimes if I can just really be still and think the answers come to me, you yeah. know, it's weird. It's like, Oh, do I just have all this? If I just can shut up? Yes. <laughs> it's all within you. Um, I know. And it sounds, but it sounds like some cheesy quote on like your wall, of, like your aunt's house. Live, but, laugh, know, love. Live, laugh, bark. <laughs> I love dogs, but it's like, yeah. <laughs> but you know, what's so true is like, this is one of my big lessons of this year personally is I need to work on trusting myself more because mm. I know what I want and I normally have a pretty gut a pretty good gut read on what I want to do and how I feel about certain situations or certain people or certain projects. But a lot of the times I will think myself out of what I actually knew in my heart and my gut was right for me or vice versa, or I know something's wrong and I'll get into it. And this, like, you're singing what my tune. Am I doing? Same thing for me. I'm like, why haven't I listened more? You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. But the content was good through all these lessons. Like having all, doing the wrong thing and then having those stories. Great. 
Yeah. You know? And it, there's not a wrong thing. It's all meant to happen. But well, yeah, I also want to talk to you about failure. Yes. Like perceived failure, because I don't think anything's ever really failure. And like, why didn't they say that? Like, why did it take me forever to learn that? Because you start to realize the more yeah. you try, that's the only way to go. Like, you have to bomb as a comedian. What is it? Like, you know, I heard like a Natasha Leggero uh, podcast and she was like, you have to bomb a hundred times or more to be, you know, feel like you're actually a comedian. Like you mark it down. Um, yeah, I started marking my bombs down. I just like sketch shows that I was doing. And I was like, I don't want to do this anymore, but it was like through trying that you find your own voice, you carve your own path Mm -hmm. because now you can kind of create whatever you want. Yeah, you and know. it also puts you in positions for other stuff or to be seen as someone that could do other things. Like, for example, something I've been thinking about doing, and I've, it's been on my heart for a long time, but I'm afraid to do it, is I guess this is me putting it out there. I'm like, oh, this is so good. I know. I've never talked about this publicly, yes. but I want, I would like to start a business in the dog field because I foster dogs. I love dogs. Like, I connect with them. I take care of them. And I've always wanted to do some sort of dog business, but I'm really afraid because I'm not an entrepreneur. And even though I've been able, I guess, to monetize my own life as a creative, I'm not necessarily, I don't see myself as like a business owner, even though I am a business. Here's when I tell you that you are an entrepreneur. (laughs) Okay. I don't know how to break it to you. (laughs) Maybe you don't have other employees yet. But you are an entrepreneur and you have to look at yourself that way because everything that you've done to get this, to do all the different facets of what you've done, Aaron, over all this time, like that's being an entrepreneur. And also you just, you just said this live on a recorded podcast. So like let, that means it's real. <laughs> yeah, I guess. No, no I've, I've said it. <laughs> no, there's, po- there's power in saying it and there's power in writing stuff down because it, it holds you to it. Yeah. And like, it doesn't have to be that. It's like doesn't have to be overnight and it won't. It's like you do that one thing where you're like, I want to, I don't know. So what type of, here's why I, I interview Ooh, you. Okay. Okay. So what right. kind of business, like would it, would it be centered around fostering? Is there jewelry, dog jewelry? Kind of. What I want to do is I want to do a product-based business that works in tandem with shelters and rescues, primarily for dogs that have medical needs, because this is also something I've talked on I have a podcast episode called Saying Goodbye, where I talk about losing my foster dog, um, who I had for six months, and I helped take care of him and nurse him back to health. And just, it was, it was great in a lot of ways. It was a beautiful experience, but at the same time, like seeing this dog who didn't technically have an owner because I was just the foster and seeing his medical needs and going through that whole journey with him. And it was tough. And luckily the foster agency that I worked with is very well connected with a couple of vets, but not everyone's that lucky and not every dog is that lucky. Mm. So I really want to do something that works in tandem with helping dogs with medical needs that would be overlooked at a shelter or wouldn't find a home or a foster because of the issues that they have. That's what I want to do. Just, you know, I haven't really thought about this much. I made sure not to interrupt that so you can go back and take that and write it down and have that because that was beautiful. Yeah. And that's so exciting. I mean, look, we all are a myriad of things and we're, we're, we'd be cutting ourselves short if you didn't go for that. I mean, I think we can't be every, you can have it all. You can't have it all at the same time. Right. Mm -hmm. I tell myself that. Because I want to do a million things, but I think that's so exciting and so needed. Like it's, that's actually my, my voice is like, like pitching because it's like, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. But to kind of like, to put that back to what we're talking about with fear and failure and stuff Mm -hmm. like that, like as someone that doesn't necessarily see myself as a business owner per se, even though what I do is a business, it's like trying to conceptualize myself in that way, realize that it's okay for me to start slow, realizing that it's okay to like, even if it fails or doesn't work out, that doesn't mean that it's a failure. I can still build. I can still, I could hire someone. Like there's so many different ways to think about how you would potentially run a business or run your life. Yeah. I mean, it can, it can be as small or as big as you want. Right. But I think through doing it, that's how you get the next step. If you wait to always take that step. You never know what's next, but you know how it is with a, with a project, with anything. You have to do that first thing and then it's like you're on that 
each step kind of naturally unfolds. Yes. And I think as writers and content creators, like how many times have you written a joke or a bit that was just so shitty for <laughs> yeah. many iterations and then finally it got there, right? Yeah. But like if you hadn't had done that first thing or if you hadn't had that first initial spark and tried to do it, yeah, then it would have never gotten done. I mean, I feel like the first things I shot, I never finished editing because I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> but no, no, no. But then, but then I just started, I, I, I actually edited all my own content. I know you edit too, but like it helped me to really understand comedy actually. And it made me realize I love editing and I actually love, I love crafting that. I'm, but it wasn't until I was forced to figure out how to edit my own shit. Cause I didn't want to pay anybody. I was like, Oh, okay, I'm good at this. And I really, I really understood comedy from like the inside out from that. Yeah. You You've know? done every aspect of it. Yeah. Every single one. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I'm, but now I'm moving more into the TV side or, you know, that's kind of where I'm headed and maybe some directing stuff. So I'm excited. I haven't done a ton of directing just like, you know, I've done like a lot of branded content and, um, but I'm excited to kind of dig deeper, go a little darker. You know, I did some sit, like kind of fun sitcom and, and, you know, parent related stuff, but I feel like this chapter I'm like, let's get deep. Yeah. I even texted Aaron. I was like, can we kind of like go for it? Yes. <laughs> We're going to go for I'm it. I'm like, don't ask me about motherhood and career. Okay. She's like, yeah, no, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's go deep and dark. Um, no, but it's, you know, it's, it's nice to explore different parts of who we are. And I think every chapter, you know, we're becoming less goo if you, if you will. <laughs> um, and so it's like, it's as, as creators, our, our content is, is, you know, kind of who we are. Mm -hmm. It's our experiences, right? Yeah. Do you ever get afraid of shifting because you've changed so many times the things that you talk about? Do you ever get afraid of like going outside of your box? Like people won't know me for this or does it ever feel like a risk to you? That's interesting. I guess not. <laughs> It's weird. It's weird to kind of love about her. It's kind of weird to have the freedom to go like, I truly feel so free right now because I have really like, I don't know, explored who I am and what I want to do and also like what I want to talk about in, in this lifetime that I actually feel really free to, to have different facets of who I am. Like, you know, I think eventually I kind of want to have you know, a production company or something where I'm, you know, I'm directing some things, I'm optioning, I'm kind of creating content that lives in different ways. And so for me, it's just another arm of that, you know? Mm -hmm. How about you? Do you feel, do you feel like it's a risk to kind of shift from, I mean, I guess, but don't you think your voice is, can go into different arms Sometimes. of what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. But like, here's a good example. Like for me is that like, I feel like my brand is kind of like very fun and very lighthearted in general, but I wrote a short because I had actually with Paul, we have the same healer. <gasps> You've gone back. Um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I've met with him twice. We have this really experimental healer that Haley and I both see. Dude, he's amazing. changed my life. Just going to say. So we did a guided meditation and this is when I was trying to figure out how to express my anger about things I've been mad about, things I haven't processed. Mm. And so he guided me through this meditation and I had this really dark experience in this meditation and I really derailed from what he was guiding me to. <laughs> I had a very different experience. <laughs> And I came out of it and I was like, oh my God, I need to write this down. And so I wrote a short and it's very dark and it's bloody. And it's like, I I can like imagine shooting it in a really gritty way. It's kind of like a metaphor of like womanhood. Yes. And like giving of our body and stuff oh, like that. It's I like, like I love gross it. and bloody. <laughs> and I wrote it and I was like, I'm terrified of this. Like, I cannot believe I wrote this shit. <laughs> But here's what I'm going to challenge you. Does it mean that you have to produce it now? But no, it's, it's, that is also a whole exercise of being able to like, look at a part of your subconscious that has probably been buried for a long time. Yes. I feel like, especially as women, I feel like we don't, we're not necessarily encouraged to express anger yeah. So, and my problem is that I express it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So I'm the opposite where I am learning to stop myself before I say things that are just when I'm in a fight with my husband, we, I, he tells me I go into like a spoken word rant because oh. it comes very clearly. <laughs> I had like one about birth control one time and I was kind of in a flow and I was like, it ended up rhyming and I was like, was that art? He's like, no, fuck you. <laughs> but it's interesting. I think that we deal in different ways, right? Yeah, yeah. And that, that part of you needed to be expressed. Like clearly. Yeah, it needed, I needed to write it down for sure. But yeah, sometimes I'm terrified of like stepping out of a box and being like putting my name on something that's like completely different than anything else yeah. I've done, which could be really cool. <laughs> but I, you know what? I'm also all about like the random, if you do it as a short, like what are the stakes? So you raise some money, I don't know, and you, or get investors. So you don't have to like uh, raise money online. I, I salute everybody that has ever done a Kickstarter or a GoFund or whatever. It's just it's a whole journey. But I think, I think that our lives are meant to be expressed and have different chapters. And I don't know, it, it doesn't have to be come out now, you know, but it's kind of cool to be like, boom, I made that. Yeah. I'm just I mean, be naked and covered in blood. Like I have a lot of questions I want to unpack, but okay. we'll say that for a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but I do feel like my, my journey lately has been like, we've, the feminine, it's like the feminine rage. We're just like fed up <laughs> and it does. It feels like I have to kind of control myself, Like I can't even look at the news lately. Cause I kind of will go to, a. am like, la la la. I, I'm involved. I'm not ignorant. Um, yeah. but it's, you have to also put energy about ba- like boundaries on yourself. I know it's a definitely a scary time for womanhood and for women's bodies. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, all that is really, really terrifying. So sometimes you have to write a really bloody short and just get it out. Yeah. (laughs) It's like my, this is my response. Here you go world. (laughs) I will say I I did write something kind of dark and I gave it to someone for notes and they're like, Ooh, okay. Yeah. They just kind of unpacked a few things that felt like you know, like, I don't know. I, I realized that it was just, it was such a different thing, mm-hmm. but maybe it's just, we need, it needed to be written. Also co- comedy is pain plus time. Yeah. Co- that's what comedy is, yeah. you know? So you're like, that's why people love dramedy, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's like, it feels that's real life. It's like, you're so, so happy and on like cloud nine. And then like something crazy will happen. And it's just like, it will wipe you out. Yeah. And it's like, that's what we all experience. Absolutely. Do you do that to your characters? Do you like fuck them up? Like, <laughs> well, I, well, I always, yeah, no, I mean, I love, I love just really anything that's really raw. We did, we had did like a digital thing and it ended up doing really well online that was like called sex after baby. And I was shooting it because no one wants to have sex after a baby. Your vagina is broken and no one talks about it. Even that six weeks after when they say it's okay, you're still broken. And yeah. And, um, I felt like I'm, I'm, I'm like, am I shooting a porno right now? This is so aggressive <laughs> and weird. And like, but then of that series, it ended up performing like really well and getting millions of views, but it was just so funny. Cause I'm like, I think people want the raw stuff. Like that's what comedy comedians talk about, right? Yeah. You say what everyone wants to say. Mm-hmm. So I love that. I love the fact that you are not afraid to be bold and to get weird (laughs) and to like really speak your truth. Once you look at the dark parts, there's nothing else to hide. You're like, okay, now what? You know? Yeah. Sometimes I think we're so scared to like look in the dark corners because we're scared of what we're going to find, but it's almost like we have to. And then we're able to kind of move past it, you know? Shadow work. (laughs) Shadow work. Oh my God. (laughs) <laughs> Dark Side of the Light Chasers is another <laughs> book recommendation. If you want to look into shadow work, have you? Oh, no, I haven't. Oh. I love to do with this. Oh. I feel terrible. <laughs> I want to take a picture of my, my nightstand. I can't even think. I have so many books I'm reading. Like, I, I don't even have a title. Like, the fact that you can spit them off is amazing. Yes. I need that. Yeah. It's uh, it's dark. It's all about like embracing your, I didn't really understand what shadow work was for a really long time. Cause mm. I was like, why are we going to focus on incorporating these things about ourselves that like could be better or that we don't love? And then I realized it's because life is short people. And because if you never get to be that version of yourself that you think is the right version or that your mom told you was the right version mm. or society told you was the right version, if you're never able to get to that place, 
then what were you doing with your whole life? Like you still have to love yourself. Like you still have to decide like, Hey, it's okay that I did this thing that I'm ashamed of, or it's okay that this is part of my past. Right. It's okay. If the rest of the world thinks I need to be 130 pounds and I'm 150, right? Like you have to decide to incorporate that shit because a lot of it isn't even your shit. And that's what I was going to say. We have taken on stories of everything else, you mm-hmm. know? And like what you start to realize is it isn't so scary. Once you look at that, you can say, okay, I can understand where that came from. And even if you have family shit, you're able to look at that and say, okay, I forgive them. I forgive myself, but you have to do that. So you can kind of like embrace it and be mm-hmm. like, and it's not even like doing bad things. I think that we're all just you know, in, in essence, you have programming that you were given and it's kind of a domino effect in life. And it's, you know, that, that idea that we accept the love we think we deserve, right? It's like you will stay in an abusive relationship after you were abused because it's like what you understand as love. But it's like, if you can be the person to break the domino, that's what we need right now. Mm-hmm. We're all, it's been a lot of dominoes and it's like, we gotta, we gotta look and just, you know, take some time. And for me, I mean, I've been in therapy for so long that I, cause I love talking about this stuff and that's, I probably should just like go and get like a psychology degree and stop paying for therapy. But, <laughs> but I just, I love learning about it. And I feel like a lot of my understandings have come from just like 15 years of just like working things out, you know? Yeah. If anyone needs a therapist, uh, better help is a sponsor of this podcast. So <gasps> better help. <laughs> Better how you can do it online in the privacy of your own home. Okay. See, <laughs> God, that was good. Call now. Um, <laughs> oh, you know what? That's great though. I feel like we're normalizing therapy because I look at my parents' generation mm-hmm. and I look at my grandparents' generation and it was the generation of like, truly don't ask, don't tell. Suck it up, buttercup. Like you're good. Yeah. You don't cry, you know, or like you're fine. And I see it because I was raised in a family that was like unknowingly like super loving, but just didn't talk about emotions. And here I am like this wild ball of just like feeling that came just like, you know, hurricaning through their home. And, you know, it's interesting. It's, it's, I feel like we now are normalizing therapy and normalizing talking about this and it makes it just makes it real and everyone can say, yeah, okay, cool. I can figure my stuff out. Nothing, nothing is a loss. Yeah. We're not broken. Like if I may, now they're scanning brains to finally get real diagnosis, uh, for like Dr. Amen, uh, has a great Ted talk about this and, um, his book, I don't know the name cause I don't remember names, but Dr. <laughs> Amen's book, um, was all about the idea that, that psychiatry is one of the only things that can, you know, diagnose something without looking at the actual organ. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just someone's perceived symptoms. Yep. I'm depressed. Okay. And so what they really started looking at is these parts of the brain that are turned off when they're, you know, a child's drawing scary things, that part of the brain they'll look at is actually not working. So there's now like rehabilitation that can cr- increase blood flow to parts of your brain through vitamins, through exercises. Wow. It's so interesting. And so once I started learning about that, I was like, you know, we just should get the word out. Better help. <laughs> Call today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now we have like a ton available of, for hire. A ton of Instagram accounts that people need to follow. Dr. Amen, <laughs> Joe, Joe Dispenza. I know. <laughs> Ryan Holiday, yes. uh, Haley White. <laughs> hey, H-A-E-L-Y. It's weird. I yeah. know. Well, I have one last question for you. <sighs> So I don't want to end. I know, right? I don't want it to end either. So great. So that little girl, the little ball of emotion, your inner child, Mm. she's still there. So if you could go back to her and tell her, knowing all the stuff that you know now and every journey that you've been on Mm. to help her understand the world a little bit better, like what would you tell her? That you are not a victim of your thoughts. I wish that I would have known that my thoughts were just something that, you know, came and went. It wasn't like it was me or it was wrong. I think I've 
I don't know if it was the residual Christian guilt or Christian guilt that's now residual (laughs) or just my own perceived awareness of myself, but I always felt like I was too much. Um, I felt too much and I would just, my thoughts would just consume me. I, I analyze everything. I think really deeply about things. I, you know, I, I, I just wish I could have realized that like, you know, I'm so much more than that. We're, we're so much bigger than we can ever imagine, you know? So that's beautiful. Oh my God. Was that too cheesy? <laughs> we can be heroes. Uh, just for one day. <laughs> that's perfect. It's a great place to end it. Uh, what a yeah. journey we went on. Wow. Really all over the place. And so where can people go to find more Haley content? Thank you. Um, my website, HaleyWhite.com, H-A-E-L-Y, white, like my translucent skin. <laughs> and my web, and um, my Instagram, my Instagram is Haley White and at Don't Call Me Mommy. And yeah, stay in touch. I love to talk about this stuff. So this is all going to be, more of this will be coming in different ways very soon. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I'm so excited. And thank, thank you, you so, so much. much for being a hot pizza <laughs> Thank you. (laughs) This is awesome. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Hot Pizza Ass. I'm so grateful to have you here. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend. Also, take a second to give us a rating on iTunes or Spotify because that's how we grow. And feel free to follow me on social media at Darling with 4 H's or Hot Pizza Ass. There you will get updates on the podcast and just my life in general. Stay in touch, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Erin. We'll see you next time.